For years and years, BlackBerry made smartphones that people wanted, that were the best at email, that were the best for messaging, and they had it under control. After some time, the likes of Apple, Samsung, and other devices emerged and completely stole the market, massively reducing BlackBerry's penetration in the marketplace. What they've had to do is completely redesign, reinvent, and rebuild the brand and their smartphones. And when you look at the new BlackBerry, the BlackBerry 10, it is completely different. In fact, you would almost think that it was never even like the other phones or even part of BlackBerry. The BlackBerry Z10 is the first example of BlackBerry catching up with the rest of the world. And in fact, in some areas, proceeding ahead as well. This is my review of the BlackBerry Z10. First of all, when you look at the device, you can kind of see a few things. First of all, there's no buttons on the front. There's nothing there. It's actually just a screen. And when you do turn the device on, it's all touch. Everything that you do while interacting with the operating system, with its apps, it's all just through your thumb because you can actually get your thumb all the way around the screen. But you can, it's a single-handed device, pure touch. Now, what I mean by that is this. If you look at your iPhone, it's got the home button on it, the button which you'll always need to get you to a safe spot. With BlackBerry, you can do what's called peaking. So if you're in an application, you can simply slide your thumb up a little bit and you can see straight away what notifications you've got, what messages are there, and you don't have to actually leave the application that you're in. And then if you just swipe to the right after peaking, it's part of flow. And what that means is you start coming into the BlackBerry hub. And what that is, is your combination of everything, your Twitter feed, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your email, your messaging, and even calls, all integrated within the hub. And you can swipe right within these things and get straight from everything and see and address everything that's come in and get straight back to what you were doing before. It's a really, really great way of integrating all of your social hub in one spot. And I found that really impressive. Now, going within that, the whole, as I said, the whole thing is swipe. You swipe from the top, you have different interactions. Swipe from the right or the left or the bottom, and again, you're always gonna enter these different modes of BlackBerry as well. Now, the actual look and feel of it doesn't look that unfamiliar to people. It's a row of apps, which is represented by icons, and you kind of know what's going on pretty quickly. It's not that hard to get used to. The biggest thing to get used to is the fact there is no button, so you do tend to find yourself looking for it at the bottom. Coming from Android, you start to look for the options key or even the back button before looking at home buttons as well. So there was a little bit more of a change there as well. Now, that was BlackBerry Flow and Peak. Now, also when you're actually replying to messages, the biggest thing you'll notice straight away is the keyboard. Now, BlackBerry having come from being such a big um, typing champion with a physical keyboard, you start to look at this keyboard and thinking, wow, they've got some real work to do because you know, it has to replace a physical keyboard, which people will miss. But it took me a matter of, I'm gonna say a couple of hours to really get used to it. Now what it does is it predicts based on context. So as you're typing, you could start typing H, and straight away above the E will be the word hello, because it knows what you might want to be saying. And it knows this because it looks at your sent items, looks at your tweets, your Facebook messages, and it knows exactly what you've been typing to people, so it knows your lingo as well. So as you're going, you'll find yourself not actually typing words, you're just swiping words. So you'll go to each letter and just swipe each word up, and sometimes you'll barely have to type, you'll be just a matter of swiping. Also backspacing, no longer a key. It is a key, but you can actually just swipe right across the keyboard, and it makes it a whole lot faster to get your messages out there. So by leaving the physical keyboard, they took a risk, but by innovating so much on the virtual keyboard, they did a very good job. And I don't actually miss the physical keyboard whatsoever. The browser, the browser is completely new, completely rebuilt. This whole operating system is built on the QNX platform. Now that doesn't mean a lot to most people, but it powers a lot of things on the internet. Now the browser itself, um, when I did a test against iPhone, Android, even my desktop Chrome browser, it scored higher than everything in HTML5 scores. Really, really impressive and incredible browser. I actually used it. It does have flash as well, so you don't have to miss out on all that other web content that you used to. Really impressive. The camera, BlackBerry's never had amazing cameras, let's be honest, but this time they've actually got a front-facing camera. It's the first phone that BlackBerry's made with a front-facing camera. So on the back, they've got an eight megapixel camera, on the front, a two megapixel camera. Now, by today's standards, that's quite good. Now, it's got the flash on the back, and it shoots 1080p video like you would expect. What they've also done is taken things a little bit step further and they've added time shift. Now what that means is when you're in a group of people and you're taking a photo, you do it with time shift. And what that does is it looks at every single person's face 
And if not everyone is perfect at that exact moment, that's fine. You can rewind each person or even fast forward each person just a little bit so you make sure that you get all the perfect faces when they were smiling. And that's really handy. And when in testing, it does definitely work. One thing which we found with that, you can't use the flash when you're doing time shifts. So if it's a night um, photo, you'll have a bit of issues there. You just have to take the standard photo that everyone's used to. Also, taking photos is very, very quickly. One of the things I will say about the camera, though, is it does let a lot of light in and sometimes too much. So you tend to have really overexposed images and sometimes it just can ruin it. Um, I will admit that the camera on the iPhone 5, for example, does a much better job. I, I used it when I was traveling with this phone as well. And you can sort of see and tell the difference quite well. But the best camera that BlackBerry's ever had, that's for sure. It, it's, it's a really good step forward and I love the innovation they've added as well. BlackBerry World. Now one of the things with starting with a brand new operating system, again, this operating system did not exist on any other BlackBerry phone before. So by coming out to the world with a brand new operating system, you have that risk of not enough apps. Now at launch, they had 70,000 apps, which is more than what any other platform has ever had, but is it enough? Well, for me, it wasn't enough. I'm missing my favorite apps like Instagram. Skype's not there yet. WhatsApp is not there yet. So those things I'm lacking, they are coming. Instagram is rumored to be coming, but WhatsApp and Skype is coming, definitely. So I'm waiting for those, I'm waiting to try more. Obviously your essentials like Facebook and Twitter is there, um, LinkedIn, Foursquare, that's all there still. But there's some extra apps that I'm just missing and when you have used an iPhone or using an Android phone, you do know and you do miss it. You can actually port apps from Android onto your BlackBerry device. I found it to not be very user friendly and as a result, I'm not gonna cover it because I just don't think that for the mainstream users, it's gonna be something that they'll be doing. It's a good idea, but I think BlackBerry, if they're going to actually go full-fledged to allow Android apps onto BlackBerry devices, they need to do a better job of integrating it into their app world, and I hope that they do. So, also, I mentioned some other apps that weren't using YouTube. They have a YouTube app on here, but it's actually just a web shortcut to the YouTube browser, which isn't too bad if you just want to watch a video here and there. But for someone like myself who actually produces YouTube videos, I was looking for an app which I could actually sign into check up on my own uploads, share and comment and things like that. And I just didn't have enough out of the web browser version. Um, it does have Angry Birds. So one of the people um, who out there who have always said to me, BlackBerry has no Angry Birds or never go there. Well, guess what? It does. It's got this Star Wars version. And I will say one thing, it works perfectly fine. However, the Red Bird, I'm sure the Red Bird, and I tested this and confirmed it on iPhone, um, normally has a lightsaber because it sort of, you know, does the little lightsaber thing. Um, it doesn't do that. Every other bird has its normal features, but this one doesn't. I found that really strange. I don't know if it was just a bug or something missing. I hope they fix that because that's like your basic bird. If you can't throw your basic bird and use its proper tools, that's a bit sad. But anyway, it is what it is. BlackBerry's added proper navigation to this device. Now, in the past, they had BlackBerry Maps and it was really, really poor. If you used it, there's a good chance you would just get too stressed out and, uh, and turn back home. I used on this to get a few places and it worked just fine. Turn by turn navigation, voice guidance, it works really well. And you can actually still minimize the app and still keep going. And I should just mention on that as well, multitasking on this device is very, very good. Um, you will notice in the videos that I've actually ran multiple games at the same time and you can. The phone has so much power and just to sort of give you an idea of that, it does run a dual core processor but it also has two gig of RAM as well which is a lot of power. Now in the likes of some of the Android phones out there which have got quad core processors and all these bells and whistles, BlackBerry 10 just doesn't seem to need it. It seems to be a lot of much lighter OS so it doesn't seem to have much of a strain on the phone and as a result it doesn't have to have the highest specs that you've ever seen in your life. So to give you a really big snapshot, that's the device. The device itself, I'm looking as more of a vessel. Yeah, it's a nice thing to, to pay attention to. And if you're looking at buying one, it's a nice looking handset. Only nine mil thick, it doesn't weigh a great deal. It's got a great textured back as well. But for me, this is more about the evolution of BlackBerry now. This is version one. People are looking at this as their last chance. It's not their last chance. I believe it's their first chance. I believe this is a whole new era for BlackBerry. And you need to forget about what happened in the past. Imagine a new competitor coming to the market and that's BlackBerry 10. Um, it's, it's really impressive, but for me, I'm looking at it more of like a, like a, you get a steak and three veg kind of option. Now with BlackBerry 10, I feel like I've got the steak, but I haven't got the three veg yet. You know, the apps and stuff aren't there yet and I'm missing that. Whereas with um, iPhone and stuff like that, yeah, you kind of seem to have it all there. So it is something you either need to be patient with or just wait for the next one. 
I do think that BlackBerry is going to start to fill this app store very quickly. You can really see already that they're getting really in touch with developers. Developers tend to love BlackBerry as well because I read a statistic that um, BlackBerry developers on average make more money than any other platform, which is really interesting. So I think people will come. I think it will happen. I think that this um, device or this operating system as well will be a very strong competitor to Windows Phone. I think anyone who's got a Windows Phone 8 device uh, could easily go straight to BlackBerry and not complain whatsoever. Everybody else on iOS or Android, it does take a little bit of an adjustment and you do have to make some sacrifices in apps, but it certainly seems worth it. I think that they're going to really come forward in leaps and bounds. It's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next few months. The BlackBerry Q10 is coming for the people who can't get away from the physical keyboard, but you really need to have a hands-on with it. Have a go with it because they've done some really good things and I think it's an awesome platform to build on. It's not perfect but it is going to try and be, and I, you know, watch this space. I think it's gonna be interesting. BlackBerry is, not gonna say BlackBerry is back, just welcome to BlackBerry again, I think. Um, I, I, I'm almost, I'm not trying to sound like an ad, but I really do think that this could be a, a whole new start for BlackBerry, and I hope it works out for them. Um, that's really gonna be my review. If you have any questions, please let me know. I, I try to reply to every single comment, and, uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. Be sure to subscribe if you like. It is free to do so. And if you hit the like button, I think that looks good as well. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.